Instead of a pinata for my daughter's mermaid birthday party, we chose to do a treasure hunt, and I made this pink and purple treasure chest out of a single cardboard box to hold all the treats and prizes at the end of the hunt. It was a lot of fun at the party. My kids have been using it for months afterwards to hold all their dress-up jewelry and play pirates and dragons and all the things you can do with a treasure chest. It is getting a little beat up after all that use, but since it was really simple to make, I'm going to create another one. This is She's Making Something, and today I'm making a cardboard treasure chest. So it all starts with a single box. It can be any size box. This one just happens to be a small Walmart shipping box. And when it is closed, that is the height of the treasure chest. But it will appear a little smaller because I'm going to be taking off the corners to give the lead a slight curve and to let those top flaps overlap. First, I pick which side is going to be the front of the treasure chest. And then, using the trusty box cutter, remove the smaller side flaps. But do not throw them away because I use them later to make the locking latch. The longer flaps are going to be the lid, but I don't want the lid in two pieces. And by removing the corners, it gives a little extra room for the flaps to overlap so I can tape them together and make a solid lid. So I cut away one corner of the small side of the box, no definitive measurements, just eyeballing it. Then I use the triangle I cut out as a template to cut out the remaining corners so I know they're all the same size. Once the sides of the box are cut to the new treasure chest shape, I fold the long, untouched sides of the box at the new corners. My baby stepped on my box, so it's a little wonky, but it still works. Sometimes gently scoring a line with the box cutter on the inside, where I want it to fold, makes it go a little easier. It's already looking more like a classic treasure chest, and I use masking tape to secure the flaps together. The new treasure chest needs to open, so I cut a line along the front right at the start of the new side shape. And now it's a basic box with a single flap lid. Once I can open it, I secure the lid pieces together with a few more strips of tape that wrap around the underside. All the cardboard edges that are cut are a little rough and messy, and so I like to tape up all the edges to help give the box a cleaner look. I use masking tape because I know I'm going to paint this box and in my experience paint has a hard time holding on to duct tape or packing tape and masking tape has always worked better for me when I'm painting cardboard. Now it's time to make that lock, using the side flaps I cut off at the very beginning. One piece is the lock, the other is the latch. 
I cut them to the size I want, which is about two to three inches wide. And the lock piece will attach to the lid and then hang down over the edge. To make a latch, I use the lock piece as a guide and fold the second piece around it and then back out. So now when I tape the latch to the front of the box, the locking flap can slide right in behind it and stay put. Again, the locking flap attaches to the lid and then hangs down loosely unattached. The latch is bent so there is an indent the size of the lock and when I tape it on I make sure not to tape the top and bottom of that indent which is now sitting a little out and away from the box so the lock can slide right in and the lid stays shut. One cardboard chest with a lock ready for painting. Whenever I paint cardboard boxes, I like to do a first coat in plain white paint to kind of act like a primer to cover up all the logos and markings that came on the shipping boxes. So that way when I add the colors and the details, if anything shows through, it'll be white paint instead of Walmart logos. After the box is all white, I mark a few lines with a pencil where I want the pattern to go. In this case, I'm putting two bands across the top of the treasure chest and one band going around the middle, the same width as the latch. The colors for this treasure chest are more traditional than the mermaid one I made for my daughter's party. This time using brown, a metallic gold, some black for the details, and then sparkly gold puffy paint for some extra bling. and the box is all painted. It's a little messy, a little wonky, cause it got smooshed, but it's shiny and sparkly and definitely looking like a treasure chest. There is a small difference in how I made this one versus the purple one. And that is because the purple chest used a larger box. I taped the lid closed at the back corners so that it opened at the top instead of the back and helped the box stay a little more stable. Because I used a smaller box this time, I wanted it to open more fully and give more access to the space inside, so I did not tape up those back corners. Either way, both chests work just fine. And my kids love to use them. In our house, it holds the princess jewels and the dragon's treasure hoard and so many other things. If you're thinking about making your own treasure chest, hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe to get notified the next time I'm making something. Thanks for watching.